Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, you can you can see the painting and the palette and the reference photo, and hopefully, you can hear me okay. Do um, do say hi in the live chat. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll drop me a little message if you're watching uh, on Facebook. It's lovely to know if anybody's actually there or not. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. That's very nice. <clears throat> Looks like everything's running all right from my side. Hello, Greet. Hi. Thank you, Pat. Okay, so uh, where are we now? We're, I think this is mm, probably the fourth session, I think. I've been actually I've been working on this most of the afternoon and uh, and it's just coming into evening now here in the UK. I'm going to paint a little bit more on it because I oiled out the whole of the surface of the painting earlier on. So the, the couch is still there, it's still wet for me to work into. So I want to finish this area, the leaves and the vase, or at least, uh, I mean, I don't know how much work that's going to take really, because I think, I feel like the painting is, is kind of getting there. And the more I go into detail with this, the more I'll weaken the composition. At the moment, I think it's in a pretty nice place. I'm just thinking, I'm still messing a little bit with the flowers as I go along. Um, you can probably see that I've got, I've got all the, the colours mixed here that I've been using for the flowers, which is what I've been mostly doing today. Also changed the background, so I put a lot more chroma over this side in the background. Did some work with the palette knife and lightened it over here a little bit. I haven't done anything down here yet though. Hi Joyce. Leslie, hello, nice to see you. Hi John, you're working on roses too. Synchronicity, you see. Must be. So I'm thinking about just actually looking at this rose and I feel like I need a bit more of a light value there. Just to show the light, I think it's kind of got a little bit generically, oh, wrong brush, a little bit generically dark over there. And this should have a blush of light coming through it, kind of a, a slightly lighter area around this side to show that form. It's always a, a, I think it's one of the risks when you, for me anyway, um, when I start working into something more, and adding more detail, there's always a risk the overall value balance of the thing will start to go a little bit. I think that's all right though. Hi Olaf, nice to see you. Hello Andre. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's probably it. So I'm mostly thinking at the moment, I'm mostly thinking about, this is what I've been doing with the background, these colors here. Get those out of the way, make some space. Thinking about the greens now. Hello, big fella. Hello. You all right? Wait, are you ready to see what I got? Whoa, where'd you get those from? Poly power. Shouldn't be allowed. Have you had a nice time? No. Oh, good. I'm, not I'm live at the moment, so um, what? I'm live. What? You're live? Yeah. You can see, you need to close the, can you close the door beam because, look, the light is reflecting on the painting now, made it go funny. Oh. Hello, big fella, you all right? Yeah. See you in a bit. Show, show, show. I'm live, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's 
have a look at. I want to mix up some greens now. Hello, Sharon and Michelle and Alison's here as well and Wendy. Hi there. Nice to see you. Uh, so yeah, I've added a bit of te texture over here with the palette knife. I think I'm probably going to leave it there. I'm pretty happy with where the background is. I've added more chroma over this side than is really there, but I think it's all right. I think my roses have a little bit more chroma around here than perhaps they originally did. But I think that's all right too. Um, I'm kind of liking where the painting is at the moment. This began as a demo, just a painting big shapes. So this was all painted in basically two values, all of the roses originally. Um, but gradually, bit by bit, I've kept on working on it. I've kept looking at it and I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to finish this painting. So I'm going to mix up some greens now. This is actually could be quite handy for you. If you haven't seen this before, mixing greens. This is how I approach it. I mean, this is specifically for like indoor light, roses, um, rose petals, you know. Um, this is ivory black, which is actually a very low chroma blue, very low chroma, very low value blue. And this is, this is, and Michael Harding calls it um, bright yellow lake. It's basically um, an aralide yellow. So it's transparent. But it has high chroma. So when I mix this high chroma yellow with that black, I get a very, very low value green. So this at the at the darkest values down here would do nice for the shadows. If I take a little bit out, let's get some more of this yellow out. Bright yellow lake. Hi David, nice to see you. Hope you're well. Get a bit more of this in. And this is going to bring up the value. It's also going to send it more yellow, a little bit more yellow. At the moment, my, my green is too blue anyway. So as I'm coming up the value scale, I'm just bringing in more of this aralide yellow and it's gradually getting lighter. It's getting higher chroma and it's going more towards green, uh, more towards yellow, yellow green. If I decide that that's too yellow green, I've got some thallo green to mix in with it there, which will keep the chroma, but send it more blue. As yet undecided, but I do know that I want to keep it fairly simple. Um, I've used all of my best leaf brushes already on the petals. I don't think I've got another one of those three. What's this? No, I don't use that. Um, I've used this, I often use this as a Winsor Newton Scepter Gold. I've used that on the background. Actually, this would probably be all right for the leaves. I'll just wipe it off. So yeah, I started today by oiling out the whole thing with linseed oil and a very small amount of um, solvent. So I know I want to go like right down the value scale over here. I don't basically I don't I, I think my challenge here at this point is to try um not to start adding too much detail at the moment because uh, I think the the overall kind of statement if you like is is reasonably strong and I want the shapes to be accurate and I want to bring in some a little bit of detail at the edges where they meet but what I don't want to do is start putting in a load of detail of the leaves which is I don't think it's going to help the painting anymore but I, I, I do want them to look natural and you know I want them to work that's made a difference already I think just adding that lower value Miriam, hi, nice to see you. And Rome is here too. And Roxy, nice to see you. Thank you, Roxy. That's a nice thing to say. Um, I'm getting a little bit to that stage where it's kind of getting a little hard to. This one's that's too yellow. A little hard to um, 
to make decisions now because I suppose I'm kind of a little bit fatigue is setting in a little bit because I'm up to how long have I been working on this today? Probably started about half eleven. So I guess getting on for six hours on and off. Um, which is a fairly reasonable amount of time to be painting for. And I would say that's probably a little more than I usually would paint. So at the moment, I'm just trying to hunt out dark areas, areas of dark value, because I've got a nice dark value up on the brush and I'm, I'm putting those in. I want to do this. I want to keep this very simplified. I don't want to get into um just following what's in the photo because I have a strong feeling that I I will lose I will lose something if I do that. So but I do want an impression of of the leaves to be working. At the moment I think bringing in the darker values is helping. It's helping the roses stand out more, which is nice. Thank you, Michelle. Miriam says, when you brought up the chroma in the dark passages on the left, did you use opaque or transparent paint? Transparent, deliberately so. So I'd already oiled it out. I had a low value over here anyway, pretty much the same value, but it was lower chroma. So I mixed together two transparent colors, um, transparent red oxide and um, green gold which I'm very fond of that mix actually for deep shadows because it keeps quite a lot of chroma at a very low value, at a kind of an indeterminate hue <laughs> and, uh, and kind of glazed it over, you know. Which I think kind of worked pretty well. So I'm still ignoring um, the division of the water, which starts here in the top of the vase, which is there. I'm trying to see past all that at the moment, not to get involved in it. Um, I will at some point soon, but I want to keep seeing all of this as kind of a, a block at the moment. Trying to see this. I mean, I'm still sticking with the basic plan of, of seeing the whole thing as a series of shapes rather than now. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying not to think about, oh, that's a stem. I need to make this look like a stem. I'm trying to just think in terms of there being a dark, where are the darkest values and am I getting them right in the right place? Put in some. I'd like to get this where there's light on these leaves down here. I'd quite like to get that. I think I'm probably going to need to drop the chroma a bit, and the value is going to have to come up quite a way from where it is at the moment. Um, the, th the chroma is high there. The chroma is probably about the highest in the painting. Oh, lots of people joining. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Diane and Margie as well. I'm, I'm sorry if you're on the Art of, of Calm group watching. For some reason, um, the software just shows you up as a Facebook user, which is really frustrating. 
Well, it's frustrating for me anyway, because I like to talk to you. Now that you're, you're here in the studio. So I reckon I'm going to be, it's going to be really easy with these light passages here, these light parts here. First, it's going to be easy to get the value too high. And I want to push the chroma, but I don't want to push it too far. So I'm probably going to go about chroma four to six. Like most of these shadows are about chroma four, and I suspect it's slightly higher than that. But I also don't want to pull too much attention down there. I want it to live, but I don't want to pull too much attention down there. So, hello, I'm Um Value-wise, I think it's it's lower than I think. I think it's probably about a value four. Um, what value have I got here on my lightest green? That's about a three, so a little bit lighter than that. So I'm using this the little value checker to check the values. So I could probably go a little bit lighter, which is good because if I add a bit more yellow, um, it is more yellow anyway, and it will also bring the chroma up. This is a really high chroma. Yellow. Am I up around four? Yeah, I'm up around four. Chroma-wise, not really sure where I am, but let's pop it in and, let's, and we'll see how it looks. I've only mixed a little bit, so I just want to try a bit and see if... If, if, if I put it down and it looks right and it immediately works as, as a the light side of, of a stem, then I'm good. If it doesn't immediately work as the light side of a stem, then there's probably something off. I think that's all right, actually. Also, with particular reference to maybe slight increase in value, particular reference to the the glass. I, I think, uh, for me anyway, and the way I generally work, it's quite important that I don't think about that, the glass at the moment. If you try to paint glass as a th as a thing, as a separate object. I find, generally speaking, it doesn't work. It's more of a, you want to paint what you can see through the glass, but slightly affected by the glass. So I'm squinting right down and I'm having a look at that value and seeing if I think it's right. Seeing if I think it works. On the whole, I think it's it's in a good place. It's it it's working as the light side of the stem, but it's not shouting. It's not in your face like it's not saying "Look at me" instead of the roses. I think it's probably in about the right place. I need to think about so so talking about looking through the glass and painting what you see behind it. What I want is another flat synthetic, and I don't have one. That's a pain. I'm going to use my shadow brush for my roses. Because I think I'm probably not going to do any more on the roses today. So the background, you see the background through, through the glass. So this all needs to be darker here. The values are out on the glass. What's going to make the glass work as glass is the value in the chroma more than anything else, is getting that right. And I have a feeling I've got a little bit too, a little bit too light. I think this is, what value have I got there? Maybe a four or a five. Yeah, I'm up to a five and I think this needs to be much lower value, looking at it probably three. But I'm going to use the background colour. This is the back, my background string, if you like, such as it is. Right, that's a value three. So if I put that in there, that will that should bring the value down.
Oops, that was way too much. It's nice working into a couch lay low because you uh, you can just wipe things out, paint over them really easily if you think they're not right. So what over here is basically is this reflected over there. And over here is this reflected over there. And if I get the values right, the, the, the glass will pretty much start to appear. It'll only need a little detail or two. Welcome, Miriam. Hello, Denise. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you. Sorry to repeat since I missed much, but can you say quickly what you used to make your green? Yeah, it was ivory black and then an aralide yellow. So the one I've got is Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake. Um, and But the pigment is an aralide. And... Um, And then just added more yellow to go up the up the value scale. To bring some of the background in. Here, so you have the impression of seeing through stems. And that's actually, um, this is a good example of just painting shapes of colour. So I'm not, you know, you can, you can see, although this is the, technically the glass, you know, behind this, you can see um, the background is showing. That's what you see through the bars. I'm not painting any of the glass yet at all, you know. I want to get all of the values and everything right before I try to, um, you know, paint, actually think about the glass. And when I do, all I'll really be thinking about is just probably just a, the odd shadow and a couple of highlights, just enough to make it look convincing. I think most of the time uh, people paint too much when they're painting glass. They paint too much, like they paint an outline that you can't actually see. I mean, you know, it's really easy to do that. I'm not criticizing anybody. Hey, thank you, Christy. Yeah, I was, that's funny about the, about the frame. Yeah, the frame will come in a little bit you know, like a quarter inch or something. I was thinking about that today and I was painting this. I was thinking, am I going too close to the edge there? I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't actually know if this will ever be framed because um, it's a long time since I actually put up any paintings for sale. Uh, I don't know why, I just got out of the habit more than anything else. There wasn't really a decision at any point, except that, well, I suppose partly because I've been spending a lot of time teaching over the last probably year or so so i haven't been painting as much and i'm really kind of feel like i'm i don't know if this is interesting to anybody or not but i really feel like i'm kind of finding my way back into it now and really enjoying painting again and i'm brimming with ideas and have a load of panels um but yes i'm definitely working a lot bigger than i used to so here's a here's an example of painting a bit of the glass it's just a very subtle slightly lighter value up there just to suggest that there's an edge i need to make sure that my drawing is uh, reasonable though so that's going to go up like that out a little bit more so i'm actually using just using the background colors to paint the glass I still feel like this 
This needs to be darker. Oh, wrong brush. So the right edge of the glass, it's, it's pretty subtle anyway, but it's, it's of the bars. It's made by a, a slightly lighter value here and then a darker value here, but they're in line with each other. So I'm, I'm trying to get that in line. And it is just mostly a case of getting the values right. Slightly complicated by the fact that I didn't draw the stems out very carefully and a couple of them are in the wrong place. Not to worry. It's a bit too light. So I'm trying to paint the shape that makes the outline, to put in the shapes that make the outline of the vase rather than actually painting the vase. And if I do a good job of this, when I get to the end of, of having blocked it in, I should just need to put in a couple of highlights and maybe a couple of shadows and it, it will... Uh, it will magically appear, we hope. So around this side it needs to be lighter. There's some green in there. Pretty sure. Not too light. Mm, don't think so. And the nice thing about, again, about painting into the couch is that I can, this can be blended really soft. We actually have a dark, a dark value coming up here, I think. which is making the edge of the vase here. Hello, Susan, good to see you. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce your name, uh, Rosbe, from Venice. 
I'll just tell you before I go any further that I'm insanely jealous that you're in Venice. I don't know if you live there or not. I've only been there once and I just fell in absolutely in love with the place. You can't walk five yards without falling over some beautiful old scroller with, a, with Tiepolo paintings or something like that. And it's just the most amazing place. Had a wonderful time when I went there. And it was actually a visit to Venice was instrumental in me returning to, or at least deciding, making the decision that I wanted to return to being a full-time painter, even though I hadn't, I'd kind of lost, lost my way, I suppose you could say, really. It would be fair to say. And had stopped painting. And I don't know if I told this story before, probably on a live stream at some point, but I... I used to, a long time ago, when I was young, I used to make a living um, copying old masters in chalk, well, in pastels, on the streets, you know. And um, it was nice, it was a nice life. Got to meet some interesting people. And, we, and, and I used to copy uh, Tiepolo paintings quite a lot because they were very dramatic, you know, and they're also quite highly coloured, so they worked really well on the street. And um, went into this one place, I forget the name of it now, it was one of the scrollers though. And we went in and plastered across the ceiling was a painting by Tiepolo. And it was that, it was that actual painting. It was one that I had copied, um, I forget the name of it now, but it was one that I'd copied so many times. I mean, I knew every inch. And I copied it pretty big, like something like 12 feet by 8 or something like that. But the original was like, the scale of it was just incredible. And I looked up and, I, and it just hit me. And I sat down on the floor and cried. And it wasn't the painting that made me cry. It was the realisation that I was wasting my time doing what I was doing and that I was supposed to be a painter. And that a sudden realisation that I'd just wasted a load of years uh, when what I really wanted to be doing was, was painting. There's a nice highlight on there. Let's see if I can get that in just with some red white. And I resolved in that moment, pretty much, that when I returned to the UK, I would attempt to get out of what I was doing, which at the time I was working in digital marketing. I wasn't enjoying it. And uh, I would try to get out of that and get back to being a painter again. And it took me a long time, <laughs> a very, very long time. I have made it. Took a lot longer than I'd hoped it would. Several, several years. But it was absolutely worth it. Yeah, thank you everyone for saying nice things about the painting. I'm quite pleased with this one actually. I think um, it came out better than I thought it was going to. I mean, you never know how these things are going to go. It started off as a demo and it seems to be ending up in a nice place. It's a little, I've been doing a lot of lower chroma paintings lately and this is, I would say, slightly higher chroma than some of the stuff that I've been doing lately. But I'm enjoying it all the same, very much.
Now I want to I want to suggest this vase with like it's almost like I'm challenging myself to make it live with a minimum amount of paint, minimum amount of actual painting of stuff. And it's not far off actually. I don't think it's going to need an awful lot more. I don't think it will. I think there's a suggestion of dark green just around here. I've got to try and make sure these things all line up nicely. See, the top part of the vase here basically is done with two lines. Well, three lines. One there, one there, and one there. The highlight there and one there. Might need a little bit more, but I'm not sure at the moment. want to bring out the... Uh, the top line, the surface tension of the water a little bit more. I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm... I'm going to, I might do a little bit with the cast shadow here, a bit of glazing there to deepen it, but I think I'm going to leave this, the cloth. I like it how it is. I think it probably works pretty well, actually, as it is. I like I like the fact that it's it's very loose and brushy and um on on sort of finished it's not overly you know I I'm doing another painting at the moment that has that cloth in too light and I'm actually I'm going to challenge myself to paint the texture of the cloth. Who knows how that's going to go. I've always been a big fan of Veronese's paintings and there's an amazing one by him in the National Gallery where he actually has painted a, 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 a cloth although it's much bigger than this one. But it's a similar texture and he's just done it with these big dabs of paint. What a painter. Amazing painter, I think. Very amazing. He catches a lot of flat for his, his figures being vapid and having no expression. And that's true, you know, it's true. They are vapid looking, but I think that's missing the point to criticize him for that. His compositions are amazing and his, uh, his technique is just out of this world. Yeah. Yeah, this is coming all right, I think. Still trying to paint the minimum, just a few. You know, I really love to see, like in paintings where uh, William Nicholson does it a lot, where he just like will paint like one line and it will be so much the perfect value that it will create an impression of the edge of a knife. You know, things like, I love things like that. I just, I find it really, uh, I'm probably just a complete nerd, but I find it, it's kind of exciting. Okay, so I've got a problem here because I've moved up the base of the bars and I suspect I've made a drawing error, um, which means my cast shadow is now starting below the bottom of the bars and it should not be there. It should not be there. Yeah, I mean, this is all wrong. This is all wrong. All right, let's get the bottom of the vase in the right place this time. Yeah. 
to do both, and then the box could be like that. Still too too high, or is it? Try a little bit lower. It, I guess when it feels right, I'll, I'll think I've got it. I think that feels right, about right. I'm like leaving things that are screaming at me. I was thinking mostly about the value of the highlights and I wasn't focusing enough on the drawing. <clears throat> Actually, it marries up a lot better with the cast shadow now, so that makes more sense. It is a bit more convincing. If I'm lucky that will go in right. No, it didn't. I should do it though. So if you remember, I don't know if you were if you were watching at the beginning, I deliberately painted the cast shadow so that it went into the base. And it's kind of paying dividends now because it means that I don't really have to paint much as long as I get it in the right place, which I didn't do just then. I don't have to paint much to create the um create the bars now. Try bringing down that cash shadow a little bit. I want to give it a little bit more chroma as well. Not too much, but. That's in a nice place now. That, um, by which I mean, I, I think in in terms of the value and the chroma, I think it's that's looking better. I can feel like I don't know. I mean, to me, it's feeling like it's it's nearly there. Like it doesn't, it just wants. So I'm just trying to, uh, I guess I want to kind of get across how, how little I'm painting there of the, of the vase, you know. I mean, partly because I don't want it to stand out, you know, I don't want it to be like, I don't want people to be looking at this and going, oh, look how he's painted the vase. I want it to be like, oh, there's a vase. And, oh, look at the flowers, you know, look at the flowers, not the bars. Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the chat messages. I'll try to catch up in a second. Was showing a little, some little bits of background showing through. I'm not hundred percent sure about the the light value yet. Um, I think it's probably nearly there. 
maybe not quite. Maybe the chroma is a little bit high. And I think that also there are some areas of the original green that I put down that, that look wrong now because they um, are too blue. Actually, let's just... Let me call this one shape. That's better. I don't like that. Let's put on there. having a, a good stand back now. Oh, I think it's nearly there. I think it's almost done. I'm sure there's something screaming out that I'm just missing at the moment that I'll probably be kicking myself for tomorrow when, um, when the oil is dried and I've got to wait another couple of days before I can work on it again. I've no doubt that there's something like that in there. But at the moment, I'm, I feel like I'm fairly close. This, uh, some chroma back there. What am I missing? Tell me what I've missed. Bearing in mind, of course, that some of it will be deliberately missed. <laughs> But I may have missed something, which I should really be putting in. What do I want? Grey. Pink ball. Susan says the lower right edge of the glass bars is slightly uneven. Ring down here. I think it's lovely. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm not sure I've got the right value there, actually. Let's paint that in anyway, and then... I'm terrible for stuff like that, actually. I get so, I get kind of um, excited about the values and stuff. And then, I, and I do miss things like that quite frequently. And then I look back at them later and I think, why, why didn't I, how could I have thought that that was all right? Well, how did I miss it? When I was painting, how did I miss that? Is that better? Is it that bit or is it down here? Is it the curve or the straight bit? I'm not sure. Actually, that should be lighter there. Sorry, I'm totally not keeping up with that with the chat. Let me have a quick look. Susan says stop! Stop! Exclamation mark. Uh, 
Uh, oh, time to catch up. Oh, blimey, lots that I've missed. Sorry. Susan says, this is no doubt one of your finest works. Thank you. Wow, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for these lovely comments. I've missed a lot. The chat's been busy, and I've been, I, I'm afraid I zoned out a minute then, and I have not caught up. TT says, can you tell us how to get access to the digital tool you use to assign the Monsoor values to the Apple study? Um, I used Photoshop, however, there is this perfect opportunity to tell you about Michelle's tool, which does the same job, um, does it really, really well. Uh, let me find it quickly. Don't be embarrassed, Michelle. I'm always hyping Michelle's tool. That thing there, check that out. <laughs> check it out. It's brilliant. Rita says, how is the left side of the vase base defined with what? It's not actually, it's not really defined at all. There's a very, very slightly lower chroma area here. You know, because, um, because you're seeing the cloth like through the vase, it drops a little bit of chroma. There's a very, and then there's this highlight and that's literally it. That's all there is down there, nothing else. Romy says, a tiny lighter tone against the left hand stems above the water. I'll have a look at that. Denise says, more light on the leaves. Mm. Thank you, Andrew. Paul reckons I've nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> the curved part of the vase. Okay, Barbara, I'll have a look. Is the drawing of the base the same on both sides? Very likely not. That's probably one of those things that I would totally miss. Uh, Wendy says, what's the size of the canvas? What size is it? Oh, it's nine inches. It's 12 inches high by nine inches across. There's my hand. <clears throat> it's probably richer, slightly richer color than uh, I, I, I often use. Paul says, maybe the signature is missing. I never do that because I'm a devil for thinking something is finished and then going back to it the next, the next day or the day after. You know, I got one I finished a while ago of, of uh, that's wrong, that is. That's wrong. Of a, of a pear with a stone pot. And I'm totally going back into it again. I've, I've had it sitting there for over a week and thinking about it, and I'm going to go into it again. So I'm not going to sign it yet. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Frederick says, just beneath the closest rose, the reflection extends too far to the left. Oh, you mean the highlight? Yeah. But if you don't look at the photo, it doesn't look out. Do you know what I mean? I, I, think, I really do think there's a division between making it look like the photo and it's a different way of doing it and thinking, does it work in the painting? One of the things that's striking me at the moment is this edge. And I think that might be too hard because it's standing out because I, I, I just feel like that's standing out and I'm going to need to do something about that. And then I'll, I'll have another look at the, um, it's this bit, right? I see what you mean. This bit is definitely out. And this was out as well. I had the highlight in the wrong place. My, to be honest with you, when I get excited towards the end of a painting, my drawing falls apart. Let's, let's just be honest about that. It totally does. It falls apart a bit. And I just think, oh, that'll be all right. And then two weeks later, I'm looking at it and I think, oh God. Or, or right, I take a, a photo of it, stick it up on Facebook or something, and then look at it the next morning and think, oh my God, how could I have left that like that? Because you notice different things when you see it in a photo. What was I doing? Oh, this edge. I think this edge is too hard. I wonder if the value is a bit too high, actually. Anyway, the edge is definitely too hard. So thankfully, I've still got all of my flower colors here. So I can make sure I've got enough. Oh, that's too light.
enough paint there and I can bring down the value a little bit and soften that edge. Where's my softener? I just felt that that was a little bit too, yeah, that's nice. That's pushed it further back, I think. And up here, I'm going to soften it too. That's better, a bit more depth. Brought that rose at the front forward more. Do I need to do anything else? What do you think? Oh, the vase. Um, Right then, yeah. This is a bit wobbly, right? It's a bit too light as well. It's too light. And it's not curve. Too light still. It's not better, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I think I fixed it. I think it's a bit better, right? I think it was it was too light as well. No. It's the big moment. Am I done? Am I? Have I finished? It's decision time, or am I going to fuss? Susan thinks I should have already stopped a while back. But um, I really do think it's worth pointing out how little I've, you know, I haven't painted the vase as a thing. Through all of this, you can't even see it. Um, what I could do <coughs> is um, push down the chroma slightly of, uh, and bring up the value, like just the tiniest amount of all of the dark greens in here, which would give you more of an impression that you were looking through glass at them by just the tiniest touch. Um, and that would possibly make it, I'd use the background colour for that, and that would possibly make it a little more convincing. It's glass. I really don't think it's, it's really necessary, though. If I squint down, I don't really see it. I'm not happy with this. This isn't looking right. I think it just needs to be less obvious. Something I don't like about this dark accent, and it's just too much. So I'm going to knock it back. Because I like this flower here, and I feel like it's like, look at me. So I'm just going to soften the edges and make it closer to the background colour so it can disappear a little. In there. But um, I mean, I think it's probably worth uh, saying again, though, and pointing out, you know, this is um, if, if you saw this in the beginning, that this was basically the whole of the flowers were two values. So what I've tried to do, you can see I've got the colors carefully mixed here. What I've tried to do is, is to make sure that as I've worked through the painting, um, that I've stayed within the shadow and the light. So those colors kind of uh, set the, uh, the range, if you like, the value range early on. And um, 
and I've tried to stay within that. Uh, not letting any of the shadows of the roses get too dark. Not letting the highlights get so light that they're lighter than, than these little highlights on the glass because they should be the lightest parts of the painting. Michelle says, do you know the name of those roses? I don't actually. I don't, I'm afraid. Um, I got them from an online flower place in the UK. My own roses are coming out now. And I've actually realized that um, I've lost all the little tags, so I don't know the names of any of those anymore. Anyway, apart from I've got a Boscobel, and I know it's a Boscobel because it's one of my favorites, deep pink. And I've painted it with Boscobel roses a few times and still have the feeling that I've never quite nailed them, never quite got it. And I would very much like to just bring it up a little bit value there at the bottom I feel needs to come up a little bit just in front of the vase base because I've got the cast shadow is basically coming slightly ahead slightly in front of the vase base there which it shouldn't and I'm mixing this color on the fly and I'm not sure I've got it exactly right but yeah that's better I think that's better and, and this is that's too much maybe Am I fiddling? Let me know if I'm fiddling. Can I trust myself now or am I just fiddling? Too much chroma here, I think. I'm trying to get, I'm just trying to bring out that feeling of, of, the, of the things actually being there, you know, and a light, a palpable feeling of the light. Just that last little bit, it's always dangerous though, isn't it? Because that could be the bit that you put one wrong note down and then the whole thing goes. <laughs> Susan says, yes, you are fiddling. You cannot trust yourself, stop now, <laughs> wait today. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. Uh, oh, let me try and catch it. Sean, you're very, very welcome. Yeah, Barbara says, this is a really good point, actually. Amazing how the tiniest touch makes a big change. And it really, really does. You know, just getting like the exact right value in the exact, in the exact place can really bring something alive or it can kill it. It really can. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, Susan says, the reflection on the foot of the vase at the left is on the top of the foot rim. In this pic, it looks off because it looks like it's on the bottom of the rim. Makes the base look not the same on both sides. Could just be the angle of the pic. No, it's probably my drawing, Susan. <laughs> She's telling me to stop anyway. Probably my drawing. Mm. It's not shouting at me, to be fair. But I'll have a close look at that. Hello, Lena. Nice to see you. I think this is the first time you've been on a, a live stream, isn't it? I'm, um, I'm a bit freaked out that you're here, actually, because now, it, you know, I could be a bit more lack, lack, lackadaisical, but, that, you know, now you're here, I'm going to have to make sure I haven't made any mistakes, aren't I? <laughs> I think we might be there. Miriam says, is there texture to your paint strokes? And before you go back into a dry layer, do you sand it down first? No, I don't sand it down, but I do oil it out. So I use one of these, a makeup brush dipped in some of this which is, um, I almost said olive oil. It totally isn't. It's linseed oil, cold pressed linseed oil with a little bit of pure gum turpentine in it, a tiny bit. And I dip that in there, I blot it off, and then I rub it really hard across the surface. So the thing has to be dry. 
Um, any texture is kind of placed in there deliberately. So this is brushy deliberately. Um, so you can almost see the panel through this. This around here, I like a bit of texture in the lights of the background. So that was all done with a uh, palette knife and then smoothed off a little bit because it was a little bit too much. So the texture comes from mostly from how the paint's put, put down more than anything else. Susan, you are so right. I'm totally fiddling and I have to stop. Wendy says too many cooks. I think it's kind of fun. I, I think it's kind of fun to ask people what they see in the painting and if anything needs to change. I'm just wandering backwards and forwards, yakking at the moment, looking at it and trying to decide if, it, if I need to do anything else. <laughs> Christine says, stop now, please. You know what? I'm, I'm getting hungry anyway, so I should probably stop, right? Um, I think this painting's probably done. I think anything I do after this point isn't, isn't really going to add anything. Um, but you know I'm going to be fiddling with the flowers tomorrow. Listen, thank you very much for coming, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. It was lovely to see you all. Uh, I guess I'll post this on Facebook. Tomorrow, if I remember, if I'm not too busy. Um, Oh, more questions. Hello, PT. Nice to see you. Christine says, do you ever use fan brushes for softening? No, I don't, because the only time I've, I've used them, I've only got the one, this one, and the only time I've used it, it just leaves like a, it leaves um, brush strokes on the painting. So I guess if you want the strokes, then fair enough, but it leaves long lines, whereas... I use an old and knackered semi-synthetic, mostly this. But sometimes I use these, like a, a, synth, a fully synthetic watercolor wash, background wash brush. These are amazing for softening. Like really amazing. You know, you can just whisper them across the surface and that, you know, they just can, can do like the most gentle. Actually, maybe this could do the bits. No, stop. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's what I use. You're very welcome, Sharon. Yeah, go to the beach. Nice. Have a cocktail. Have a cocktail, Susan, for me. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. Thanks very much, everybody. Um, I'll try and make a, a short... I've got a load of footage of this one being painted, so I'll try and make a short video of it if I can get around to it, but kind of... I have quite a lot on at the moment, so I don't know if I'll get to it. Um, but thank you. It's been a pleasure to paint for you. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.